fixing this problem is really important for pro sounding vocals. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Getting pro sounding vocals is actually about lots of small steps, one of them being the editing. But editing vocals for alignment can be an incredibly tedious process, which is why for the last couple of years, I've been using the Vocaline plugin to do just that. It's done quickly and easily, and I get to stay creative and move on with my project, which is why I'm incredibly happy today to tell you about the new version. But also, I'm super happy because I've got an exclusive coupon code for you. If you use the code on the screen or shown in the description down below at checkout, you're going to get a further 20% off one of the two plugins that we're going to talk about in today's video. Now, before we get into why it's so super cool, let's look at the problem it solves. I've got a whole stack of vocals here in my song. At the top in green, I've got my lead vocals. Below that in blue, I've got two unison vocals. And below them in purple, I've got a whole bunch of harmony vocals. And if you look carefully at the waveforms, you can see that some of these vocals are a little bit out of time with each other, especially look over here at these three. You can see a lot of misalignment there. We're going to get back to those in just a moment. But first of all, let's have a listen to these vocals in the context of our song. And I guess Superman never really ever gave a damn about love. Now you may be thinking, hang on a second, Mike, that doesn't sound too bad. Well, let's have a listen in solo. And I guess Superman never really ever gave a damn about Lois Lane. Now you may be starting to hear some of those timing issues. I'm going to focus on one part in particular towards the end. We talked about it earlier. And listen out for the S in the word Lois. Okay, have a listen to this. Lois Lane. And again. Lois Lane. Do you hear that kind of staggered effect? And it really kind of pronounces the S. You feel like you want to take a DS to it right away. But that's not going to solve all your problems. Now, you still may be thinking, yeah, but in the context of the mix, it'll be fine. Have a listen to it again, because I reckon it's one of those things. Once you hear it, you can't unhear it. And it's really annoying. Again. Okay, so I already actually fixed this with the plugin Vocaline and I undid my changes. So I'm going to redo those changes for you now and take a look at the waveforms as I do it. I'll do it right now. And you probably saw them all kind of shuffle around. Let's undo it and then redo it again, and you can see them all shuffle around and line up with each other. Now, let's have a listen in solo again to that whole vocal passage, and listen to how much tighter it is. And I guess Superman never really ever gave a damn about Lois Lane. Let's have a listen to that S in Lois again. Lois Lane. Now you could fix this in a lot of doors manually, okay, by sort of aligning things and bending the audio around, but it'd probably take you hours to do it really nicely for a, a whole track. And then you might think the next day, look, I want it to be a bit tighter or a little bit looser and you have to undo it all. It's an absolute pain. Using the Vocaline plugin, it actually only took me about 30 seconds to fix all of this. I'm going to show you exactly how right now. <laughs> Although you can insert Vocaline as a plugin on your tracks, a way better way to use it is as an ARA or ARA plugin. With this method, you're working kind of at track level rather than as an effect applied afterwards, and it's way more efficient. And by the way, if you're a Pro Tools user, this is new functionality in this version for you. So enjoy. Here in Studio One, the way I would do this is to select all of my clips or events and right click on them and then go down to edit with Vocaline. And you can see Vocaline opens at the bottom of the screen here. And by the way, with this new version, it's got a kind of a new look to it and it does function a little bit differently as well. Now, the first thing I need to tell it is what I'm going to align everything 
two. So to do that, I'm going to select my lead vocal only. So I'm doing that now. And then once I've done that, I go down to vocal line and in the guide section here, I click on capture and it pulls in that lead vocal. It's going to align everything else to that. Then I'm going to go ahead and select all of my other vocal tracks except for that lead vocal. So I've got all of those selected. I want to align all of those to the lead vocal. So to do that, I go down to the dub section in vocal line and click capture there. And it's going to pull all of those in and align them. It's yellow at the bottom here on this waveform, which means it's still processing. But once it's finished, which is now, you can see that the person purple areas here show the new alignment. Now currently I'm just showing one of the tracks that wasn't singing all the time. I can change this area in the middle to show different tracks. But now that I've lined them all up, let's have a listen. And I guess Superman never really ever gave a damn about Lois Lane. Now you can refine this with a number of tools in Vocaline, but for me, and I use this on just about all of my songs now, it takes about that long. I'm usually happy with that result. Now, most of the things that you've seen here are available in the standard version of Vocaline. This used to be called Project. The previous version was Project 5. But what I'm about to show you in the next few sections are some features which are available in the Pro version, which used to be called Ultra. So actually, Vocaline did a really good job of syncing up my vocals. Let's expand the interface and take a kind of a closer look. Now, I want to draw your attention to three icons on the right hand side. These open up various panels so we can get to particular settings. And if I close off these two and just leave this match timing panel open, you can see with this style here, which is maximum difference, I had it up to its full setting of maximum tightness okay we could make it looser if we want to if we want to make it sound say a bit more natural and it will do that for us but i had it on maximum tightness and it did a really good job of really aligning these waveforms tightly now if i close this panel and I drag my mouse over the top yellow waveform here. Can you see there's a white line which appears, or two white lines, right? And as I move this over here, those two white lines kind of go out of line with each other, don't they? This is showing us that Vocaline had to do quite a lot of work here. And if I set this at the beginning of the yellow waveform, you can see that the orange waveform below was actually quite a long way out of sync initially. However, if we go to the bottom, we can see the result of Vocaline doing its magic with this waveform. The yellow outline here represents the guide and the purple waveform represents the output. And you can see it's nicely in line. But that doesn't always work out okay. Now I have to admit, with this particular example, I couldn't find any bad examples. But if there were, we could fix them quite easily with something called sync points. And these are really improved um, in Vocaline Pro here. So I'm just going to scroll over and find something. Look, this example here is actually, I think it's actually correct. But if we look at the beginning of this purple waveform, let's imagine for a moment that it should be synced up with this peak over here, okay? I'm asking you to imagine. I don't think this is actually wrong, but let's fix it even though it's not wrong. So it's very easy to adjust the alignment. Let's go up to the top. I'm going to right click and add a sync point okay so there's our sync point now all we have to do is find a point on the yellow waveform and adjust this yellow handle to that point so i'm just going to choose the peak of that transient there yeah that loudest part of the guide vocal then i can grab the orange handle and sync it up to the point where i think it should be on the orange waveform let's set it to the beginning of that kind of big blob there OK, now you can see now at the bottom with the output that the beginning of what I just called a big blob is lined up now with that peak. And it's that easy to manually align things up yourself. 
you don't need to do it a lot, but it does happen occasionally. <laughs> if we capture and align some vocals as we did earlier, and then come into Vocaline and fine tune those vocals using some of the more advanced features that we might see in the panels over here, any changes that we make are only going to be applied to the currently shown track here in orange, okay? Now when you think about it, that could be awesome because it means you can really fine tune each individual track. However, it could also be a pain if you say want to adjust the overall tightness of a group of harmonies or something like that. So thankfully in this version, we do have a groups feature, but we need to make sure we capture things in the correct way. So I'm just gonna undo my previous capture. And this time I'm gonna select uh, these two vocals up here in blue. And before I actually go ahead and capture them, I'm going to go down to here to the dub section and select new group for next capture. OK, and then I'm going to click on capture just as I did before. Now, if I make an adjustment to the currently shown waveform I see here. So let's say, for example, I go over to the right and I loosen off the tightness here. OK. Yeah, and then I select the other waveform I captured or the other vocal I captured, go to that. You can see that same setting is applied to that um, vocal as well. Super useful. Now I could go ahead and capture all of the rest of my other vocals. So I'll just go down and uh, grab all of these purple ones here or just a few of them and I could uh, create another group. So I'll go down to dub here and I'll just go to create, uh, sorry, new group for next capture again click on capture and then it captures all of those and aligns them as well. And I can go ahead and make whatever changes I want to use in the various settings over here for that particular group. I could go back and select my initial group again and I could go ahead and, and make changes to that one again as well. Now so far we've only aligned timing but we can also align pitch. I'm going to be using the smart pitch feature in the new pro version. We'll be finding out why it's smart later. But first of all, let me explain. I've captured two vocals here, the guide vocal and a kind of a backup vocal, which is sometimes singing exactly the same notes, so unison, and other times singing harmony. You'll see here in the first phrase or the first half of the phrase, it's in unison and then it goes to a harmony. Let's have a quick listen. And I guess Superman never really ever gave a damn about Lois Lane. So it switches between unison and harmony. And if we change the view at the bottom here to show pitch, then we can see those variations. So the yellow lines represent the guide vocal and the purple lines are the output, okay? So you can see at the beginning here, they're kind of roughly in line with each other and here they're very separated where I was singing the harmony. Again here, roughly in line with each other and then separated again, okay? And the reason the output is separated, there's been no change to the pitch, is because we haven't actually switched on the smart pitch feature at all. So I'll go over to the right and open up the uh, match pitch uh, panel here and I'm just going to turn match pitch on. Okay. Now we've turned it on and immediately, did you see, I'll just turn it off and on again. The output has changed so that the pitch is exactly matching the original vocal. Let's have a listen. And I guess Superman Never really ever gave a damn about Lois Lane. Now, it's highly likely that that's not what you want. And that, I believe, is how it was behaving in the previous version. It got a bit confused when people were switching, you know, between unison and harmony. So now, if we look over on the left, we can see there's a smart pitch drop down. At the moment, it's match all to guide, which is the behavior that we're seeing there. Now, if we go over to match unison only, you see those harmonies reappear. Now, it's still trying to match the pitch and doing some pitch alignment with the parts that are in unison, but then it realizes, oh, this is not unison, and it doesn't um, put it in line with each other. So let's have a listen. And I guess Superman 
Never really ever gave a damn about Lois Lane. That's great. So we've restored our harmony, if you like. Now we can further go ahead and actually do some pitch correction on that harmony, if we wish, by going over and selecting the third option here, which is match unison and tune non-unison. So non-unison being the harmonies, okay? So it's going to tune them. You'll see the purple lines move a little bit. There you go. And now it's actually done a little pitch correction on the harmonies as well. It's pretty smart. Now, apart from Pro Tools users being delighted about the new Aura mode, you may have also noticed me using the new undo and redo features from within the plugin itself. However, I think the thing which is going to get people really excited is the fact that with these versions, you no longer need iLock. Hooray! Don't forget to use the links in the description down below and use that coupon code to get a discount off of either the standard or the pro version. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you in the next video.